From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris here. It's live and direct. Sorry, uh, we had a tape show, I think, yesterday, didn't we? Because I was feeling under the weather, but I'm back now. Not that I was sick, but I have muscle aches and pains, and I have a hernia. Okay, I'm sharing that for you despite the fact there are HIPAA laws. I don't care. I'm going to be up front with you, and it was kind of sore, but the doc says I'm going to be okay, so I'm back at it today, and and it's nice that we have today, not doing open phones today, but it was the show that was scheduled for yesterday, going today. Our guest was kind enough to reschedule for us, and uh, it, it kind of ties in with exactly what we all deal with, what I'm dealing with, be it, you know, health issues, um, seasonal time changes. Do you feel more run down? She was telling me that come winter time. Don't push yourself necessarily the way you do in the summer. Now's the time to hibernate. Apparently the bears have got it right. All right, we're gonna get into it this morning talking about living the healthy lifestyle, especially as we approach the end of the year. Maybe you have New Year's resolutions. Maybe you're struggling with how to deal with getting through all of this great holiday food. 737-7587, health coach Holly Ladd with us this morning. Hello. Hello, good Have morning. you ever had a hernia? I've never had a hernia. You never Thank have, you. and you don't want one. Knock on wood, don't want one. Mine's very small, but it was mm -hmm. aching a bit, and you know, they just, you gotta take it more easy. And Absolutely. I'm gonna, you know, I've never, I don't know, are you someone who's ever worked out to any degree, or you try to exercise? I've never been limber, and I hated stretching, but now I'm gonna start doing the stretching. It's never too late, right? Never. And I'm gonna get into yoga. Right on. Good. I mean, and, and yoga, you know, I suppose, I, I, do you, have you done some yoga? Absolutely, I mean, yeah. It's, it's not necessarily meditation, even though that can be part of it, mm -hmm. and, and shavasana at the end, mm -hmm. but um, it's, it's, it's mostly stretching and... It's everything. It's strength, flexibility, meditation, breath. I mean, to me, yoga is, I unfortunately, it's hard to find the time for yeah, me to right. do it. I mean, the classes are at the crack of dawn or at dinner time, so mm -hmm. for me, it's hard to find the time. Usually for an hour. For right? an hour, yeah. yep. And um, it, it just touches everything. I think it's a wonderful practice, and if you can find the time and a good instructor, and it, it, yoga really varies instructor by instructor, so sure. you need to kind of find someone that fits with your, you know, if you're a power yoga kind of guy right. and you want to get a good workout and sweat and that kind of thing, there's that, or if you're more... Oh, peaceful and relaxed, so you can find right. that. So there you just have to find ways. the right, exactly. I'll probably do a mix of some, but anyway, yeah. that's part of what I was you know, gonna look at. And then I was also telling her, you know, uh, I know several people this time of year maybe don't have the flu or don't necessarily have a full-blown cold, but just feel a little bit more run down sometimes as the temperature changes, as we move into less daylight mm -hmm. and all of that, and you feel run down. And your thinking is times change in the winter compared to the summer for you. Yeah. in terms of how much you push yourself? Yeah, I mean, if you look at sort of um, our ancestors and, and sort of historically as we go back to sort of the Paleolithic era or hunter-gatherer era, the winter was really a time of shutting down. I mean, it was cold. Right. They didn't have heat. They didn't have, you know, Gore-Tex. They didn't have down. Um, you know, they would hang out with their animal hide and just kind of hunker down. They didn't have a lot of food for energy, so they couldn't expend a lot of energy. Sure. So it was a more, it's a sort of, um, it's in our DNA that it's a time of year where we should kind of just relax a little bit more. It's a season to reboot and then get ready for the activity of spring, summer, and fall where we're very active. And I think um, if you look at studies, you know, cold and flu season is generally January, February after this time of year with the holidays when people are pushing themselves, mm -hmm. eating too much sugar, which completely depletes the immune system and saps mm -hmm. your energy, drinking more alcohol than maybe they normally drink, um, mm -hmm. sleeping less, stress of the holidays and right. family. And I think that we really need to honor that winter is a time to just take it honor it and, and take it easy and you don't feel like doing something, don't do it. I mean, I know I, my workout schedule is way less in the winter than it is throughout the year and I sleep more in the winter. All right, so you know what that just reminds me of? Someone once told me, listen to your body. Absolutely. Listen to it. So if you feel, it doesn't mean there's something wrong if all of a sudden you just feel like sleeping a little more. I mean, sometimes if you're sleeping all the time, yeah, maybe you want to yeah. check that out. Yeah. But if you're just a little more fatigued and you think yeah. you need to sleep more, do it. Absolutely. Don't I mean, fight through it, yeah. Yeah, summer I usually get about seven to seven and a half hours of sleep. Mm. In winter I'm like eight and a half to nine to even nine and a half sometimes. Wow. wow. On the weekends. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what are you telling, okay, now you, you're a health coach, so you have clients that you work with. Um, what changes, because that's part of what we wanted to do this program for is we get, like you said, the holidays, Christmas and all of that. Mm -hmm. what, what are you dealing with with your clients right now or what are they asking for right now? 
Um, I, I think a lot of them are, um, first of all, wondering how to get through the holidays without gaining weight. Because they have their routine leading up into this. Yes. I think we all do. We try to, you know, we have what we like to eat and what we watch, and then all of a sudden it just is thrown askew. Yes. You have more time off. Yeah. You have all these times where you're going to friends or families mm -hmm. for gatherings. Mm -hmm. So you lose control. It's nice someone else is cooking for you. Yeah. <laughs> but you lose control to some degree of applauding. And part of my problem is willpower. At home, I can just fix what I fix, right. and it's there. Mm -hmm. I'm not tempted by something new. Mm -hmm. You go there, and there's that ham. <laughs> I like ham. I can't resist the ham. <laughs> Is that okay? Eat the ham. No, no, don't even say that. Eat the ham, Nick. Just All not right. as much, maybe. Uh, I'm going to eat a lot Start of Start with the vegetables. Like, I tell my clients, like, if you're at a party, at a dinner, okay. and there are vegetables, and there are meats, so eat your vegetables and your meats first, and then go back for the potatoes and the heavier, starchier things while you're already sort of pre-full mm -hmm. so that you don't kind of overindulge. I mean, that's one strategy. Yeah. Um, I think it's really important to have an intention, like, okay, I'm going to go to Aunt Betty's house and she makes the most amazing pecan pie and I'm going to have one slice and that's it. Right. And tell yourself and, and, and make it a commitment to yourself. And a vision to what you want to feel like on January 1st. Do you want to feel heavier and, and achy and brain foggy and all that sort of stuff, or do you want to feel ready to start the new year? Right, exactly. That's part of the trick, is because you always regret it later. Yeah. Buyer, or buyers, now in this case, it's eater's remorse, eaters remorse, which you end up feeling. Now, when you talk about brain foggy and all of this, one thing I wanted to ask you about, um, as we get into this time of year, maybe some people are trying to limit certain foods, because we talk about things, and I guess gluten is at the top of the list for some folks, mm -hmm. inflammation, joints, mm. things like this, stuff that can make you feel achy and such. What are the foods that, you know, more people are finding themselves sensitive to these days? Or and if you would, just talk about the inflammation that someone may be living with that they don't even know what's causing it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so mo a lot of us are, um, we are sort of a chronically inflamed society. Now, you society. kind of went into, through Absolutely. this yourself years ago, right? Yep. When that's where you did your transition to what you were doing Absolutely. to what you're doing now. Yep. Yep. I had my own battle with inflammation, which caused an autoimmune disease or was part okay. of an autoimmune disease. And, you know, as a society, because of our diet and our lifestyle, we are sort of chronically inflamed. And, it, and there's, it's not like a sprain your ankle or wrist kind of inflammation where it gets red and puffy, but that kind of stuff is going on inside that you can't detect. Right. And generally, it's, uh, gluten is a big cause for many people. Sugar is very inflammatory. Um, You're talking about like processed sugars or? Yeah, refined okay. sugar, white yeah. sugar, that, yeah. that stuff. Um, and, and sensitivity. So if you, most people, the most common food sensitivities are corn, soy. Corn. Dairy, okay, gluten, which is wheat, which protein, is wheat, right? Yep, rye, wheat, spelt, camet, barley, okay. all that sort of stuff, and um, and you want to, you know, maybe try eliminating those from your diet and see how you feel, because a lot of these things are responsible for our joint pain, and we may say, oh, I'm 50, I shouldn't be achy and have joint pain. No, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. You shouldn't have joint pain. No, unless you're a pro football player and you were, you know, hammering your knees for, you know, t right. your whole life. But a, a regular average human being should really not have a lot of joint pain as a sort of natural part of aging. Okay, so if, if what you're saying then is short of having some injury that explains it. If you have joint pain, especially when you're older, don't chalk it up to just getting older. Yeah. Say, that, you know, maybe there are things you can do to change starting and looking at your diet mm -hmm. that will take that away, mm -hmm. which is great because that's what I'm thinking. I mean, every once in a while, we all get more aches and pains as we get older. Older, yeah. But I'm trying to separate maybe something that I could do. Like I said, I'm going to change things. I'm going to start mm -hmm. doing yoga more. Awesome. Now, diet, though, I never really consider. I mean, I, I think I eat a healthy diet, but I, I, I know I don't have a gluten um, allergy, but I wonder if I eat less of those foods or fewer of those foods that I'll feel better. Yeah, I encourage people to do an elimination diet. Yeah, just try it. Just see. try it. You take out all those five things uh, for two, three weeks. Corn, soy, dairy, gluten, and what? Um, and sugars. Sugars, yeah. Like processed sugars, or can you have honey on your oatmeal? You can have honey on your raw, local honey. Okay. But try taking those things out for two or three weeks. Uh -huh. And then you add them back in one at a time. And, and, you, you, and you have to wait three days before you introduce the next thing, because it takes up to 72 hours for that food to have an effect on you, mm -hmm. which we also don't realize. Um, so you could say maybe you eat uh, corn on Monday, and then right. on Wednesday you get a horrible migraine. 
Well, yeah. that could be related to you're eating the corn on the Monday. Right. And so. then you realize that's what I'm going to cut out. Absolutely. Listen, before we take a break, let's squeeze in a call because we'll get more later from Mark. And uh, Mark, good morning. Good morning, Nathan. Good morning, you guys. How are you, Mark? What's on your mind, buddy? Uh, I have a question. Why do you uh, gain weight when you quit smoking? I, <laughs> quit. I ain't had a cigarette in six years and I put on a lot of weight. Why is that? There you go. Good question. I had a friend who quit chewing tobacco, which was great. The stuff will kill you. And the the one byproduct of that was that he, his appetite mm -hmm. came back big time. It's almost as though the tobacco took away his appetite. I don't know if it's the same way with smoking, but yeah, a lot of people complain about after they quit smoking or chewing, they find themselves gaining weight, eating to compensate. What do you think? Um, well, I mean, I, I don't know sort of chemically if there's mm -hmm. something that happens with nicotine or whatever to your yeah. metabolism, but I do know that a lot of people that quit sm smoking is something to keep you busy, something to keep your mouth busy, right. and they start just snacking and eating more um, and maybe craving right. saltier foods. I'm not, I'm not really sure, but it does happen to a lot of people, and the people I say just are like, I need something to do, so I eat. So I guess if, if you're feeling that craving, the way to fight it would be if you're going to eat, then maybe just watch what you eat. Uh, it's, it's what you're eating. I mean, I, yeah. that's, that, that was my friend's thing was, look, my appetite came back. In fact, I had a friend who wanted to lose weight uh -huh. who started chewing, if you can imagine. <laughs> and it, it did, he said, take away some of his appetite, but then he got one of those white uh -huh. lesions in his mouth. You know what? Mouth cancer ain't worth it. No. And so he, he came back off it and found other ways to lose weight. And there certainly are healthier ways to do it. But um, all right, for, so for someone like that, I mean, he put on the weight after smoking. Mm -hmm. The last thing you want him to do is to go back to smoking. Absolutely, and, and sort of have to figure out why am I smoking in the first place? What is it that it's doing for me? I mean, other than sort of the high that you get, the chemical right. you know, that you get from the nicotine and, and all, whatnot. And maybe it's um, going for a, walk, a 10 minute walk instead of eating something or drinking some water instead of eating something. I mean, it's um, just plugging in an alternative, a healthier alternative to why you would have a cigarette. Yeah, and so you just have to evaluate that and see if there's something that, as soon as you get that craving for a cigarette, that you can grab something else. Yeah. Or, you know, you're in, and the craving's gonna be, I want something, that's why you're eating instead. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, celery sticks. Everyone's out of celery sticks. Hey, by the way, I was. At, is there any food? And I, I think I asked you this before that you consider to be calorie neutral. What I mean by is it takes more energy to digest it than the nutrition you're getting from it. Uh. <laughs> celery would be about as close. <laughs> I don't know what kind of nutrition's in celery, but it has to because it's roughage. Take Celery some energy for your body to digest it. So, is there any food you can eat that actually makes you lose weight? <laughs> Maybe lettuce, I, you know, I, um... You know, what I'm talking about is something that has absolutely zero nutrition, but is fibrous, so your body has to work to digest it. Mm -hmm. I would think celery or lettuce would be the two options, but who knows? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, even celery and lettuce have beneficial phytonutrients and minerals. And, sure, at the uh, base level, you know, so but hardly any calories. Hardly any calories, yeah. You could eat a huge, huge bag of celery every day. And, and I be, challenge you to eat 700 calories of celery. It would be impossible. It would. Think <laughs> about it. So, and you can eat 700 calories of chocolate chip cookies with two cookies. Or a soda. Boom, or, done. Or, you know, Rick likes the corner of the brownies, <laughs> okay? But yeah. I personally, you know, he, he likes, do you like the filet, Rick? Love the filet. He loves the filet. <laughs> That's the middle of the brownies. All right, listen, on that note, we're going to take a break. We'll come back. Take more phone calls, 737-7587. Holly Ladd's with us. She's our health coach. If you have questions, we can get into vitamins. We can get into, you know, joint pain. We can get into your holiday season issues and whether or not you think New Year's resolutions are a good idea one way or the other. You can set them, but can you stick to them? We'll be back with more right after this. Stay with us.